Hey guys, how's it going? This is Stephanie or Bandit Stephanie and uh, today is Friday, April 20th, 2012. I think this may be a record for me. This will be my third video this week including my Proof Weight Loss Surgery Works video. Um, <clears throat> kind of wanted to come on and do this video because I will probably not be in town next week for my um, weekly update. I will be traveling for work. So um, there's a couple things, I guess, by um, popular demand that I want to discuss. So I wanted to do this video today for you guys. Um, and also at the end I will show you guys my scars um, from my brachioplasty and whatnot. So first things first, I want to um, thank you guys all for subscribing, um, your comments, your support. It's awesome. It means the world to me. So, you know, I really try to... Um, kind of keep it real for you guys and, and anybody who messages me I do my best to get back to you guys so if you guys have any questions let me know I'm more than happy to help anybody who's new to my channel I was lap banded on March 15th 2011 um, I hit my or I started my journey at 313.6 pounds hit my goal of 145 pounds on Valentine's Day of this year set a new maintenance range for myself and I'm now sitting in my new maintenance range of 135 to 139. Um, I think I'm around 135.6 pounds right now. So i um, lost somewhere close to 180 pounds in 13 months. So um, maintenance is going good. Um, and that brings me to my first topic is my 10 go-to food items. Um, I get a lot of questions about what things I eat on a daily basis and um, I really want to make it simple for you guys. I have a list that I made um, probably one month post-op um, of 10 foods, my 10 go-to foods. And within discussions with my surgeon, um, you know, we decided that at every meal I should try to have at least one of these food items. Um, so 10, top 10 go-to foods are chicken, turkey, fish, ground beef, yogurt, eggs, cottage cheese, beans, protein shakes, and cheese. I um, try to have one of these items at every meal I eat. High protein, low carb is what I do. Uh, it works and uh, it's, a, <clears throat> it's, a good, it's a good thing to follow. Um, you know, I think that if any of those foods that I listed, you cannot get down with your lap band, then your lap band is too tight. But um, my motto is I try at every meal to have one of these items because they keep me satisfied, they keep me full. It's high protein, low carb, and um, you know, even within my maintenance phase, I still try to follow the same thing. Um, <clears throat> along with that, um, another question that was asked of me was, when you're craving bad things, what do you have? So while I say I'd like to at every meal have one of these items on my top 10 list um, doesn't always work. That's not always the case because I do have cravings. I'm a big sugar junkie. So, um, you know, a couple things that I found that when I get these cravings, um, my kind of go-to items to... Uh, satisfy those urges are um, first and foremost sugar free pudding um, it's pretty good it's I make it with skim milk um, I, I always have many different flavors in my apartment um, and I don't make it you know or eat it on a daily basis but just here and there I'll have it um, also, I've, I'm a big ice cream fan, and I always have been, and probably always will be. Um, here and there, I will splurge on like frozen yogurt, but when when I don't do that, my kind of go-to items are um, this Cool Whip Free. So what I do is I freeze it, and um, it's almost kind of like you know gives you that satisfaction of an ice cream. Um, sometimes I'll add some fruit or granola or something, but, um, you know, that's pretty good when you're having a, a sweet craving. And uh, last but not least, I don't know how many of you guys have heard of this Arctic Zero um, ice cream, but apparently I think Dr. Oz talks about it or something, but um, 
It's 150 calories for this whole pint and somewhere around 15 grams of protein. So, you know, for me, um, my treat will be, I will usually eat the whole pint if I get one, but at 150 calories, it's really kind of guilt-free in my mind. So, um, if you guys check out arcticzero.com, I believe it is, you can see where the locations are near you that sell that. They have a ton of different flavors and it's really, really good. Um, and one thing I didn't mention with my top 10 go-to foods, there are a couple of websites that I uh, frequent uh, to get recipes on how to change up chicken, turkey dishes. I use lapband.com and I use bandfriendlyrecipes.com. They both have a lot of good recipes. You can search by low carb, you can search by uh, level of difficulty, and um, you know, it really just kind of gives you some good recipes for the crock pot or the oven and just kind of changes up that that chicken or turkey and um, so I use those a lot. Um, so let's see what else. Um, I wanted to discuss also um, breast implant sizes. I know I've had a lot of questions as to what size implants I got and how do you choose what's right for you. Um, and it's it's not a straightforward answer only because I had a lift, so um, just kind of the background on that. So I started probably at a size double D um, at my highest weight, and at when I got to my goal weight, I was a C. But um, in my opinion, it was kind of a fake C because it was just you know skin pretty much. So when I consulted with my plastic surgeon, we discussed a lift, and um, you know. He had told me that with a lift, I would likely go down to an A cup, um, that that is probably more my true size. So that being said, implants were not even an option. I knew I was going to get them. I did not want to be an A cup. I want to be proportionate, and to me, an A cup um, wasn't going to make me happy. So that being said... Um, the size implants that I got are 450 cc implants, uh, silicone, and, um, you know, I still have a lot of healing and swelling to go down, and they gotta, they have to drop a little bit, but, um, you know, basically he said once, once it's all kind of said and done, um, I'll be probably a full C or a small D, which is what I wanted, so that's kind of, uh, you know where I am and how I chose the implants that I did and I think for me I kind of just took my surgeon's advice and figured he knows better than anybody does um, so right now as you can see I have my compression garment off um, kind of giving myself a break and I wanted to show you guys my arms my scars um, I'm about three and a half weeks post-op brachioplasty so um, you know when my arms are down to the side you you can't see any scars or anything. Um, you know, I think I'm going to be really happy when all the swelling goes down. Maybe I'll get some muscles here, you know. Um, but uh, let me show you guys kind of where, you know, where the scar is. So for me, I told you guys that this I have an incision from the inside of my chest. It goes up all the way around, goes up into my armpit, and then it goes down to... Um, almost my elbow. So you guys can see there the scars three and a half weeks post-op and um, there's still some swelling. There's still um, they're still a little uneven. Um, I noticed that my left arm is more tender. It's more swollen and that could be because I'm a lefty. I don't know. But um, I am confident that it'll all even out and it'll all be good in due time with patience. Um, so, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, Go-to food items, foods to eat when you're having cravings, and a little bit about my plastic surgery and uh, um, kind of determining your breast uh, implant size if you're so inclined to do such a thing. So, before this gets past 10 minutes, I'm going to stop it now. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Let me know if you guys have any questions and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.